In today's video, I'm gonna give you a little behind the scenes and a little update as I get ready to film my next Subaru only DIY video. Thanks so much for checking out the video, guys. My name's Luke, this is a Subaru only show. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video, guys. I really appreciate it. This is that intake manifold from the 2005 WRX engine. It's part of my EJ205 engine build that I've been walking through on the Subaru Only channel. And these are all the parts that are actually gonna go into this intake manifold reassembly before I drop it onto that engine. That's the fuel rail assembly right there. This is a wiring harness right here. This actually bolts up to the bottom side of that intake manifold. That's a turbo inlet tube. That's gonna bolt up underneath this intake manifold. Those are the tumble generator valves. Those will bolt up to the bottom of the left and the right side of this intake manifold. And of course, there's that 2005 WRX intake manifold that I painted with that STI red wrinkle coat finish. And I actually walk through all the steps for prepping and painting this intake manifold with this STI red wrinkle coat finish in an earlier video. So if you're interested in doing that with your intake manifold, make sure you check out that video, guys. And of course, all these parts are going to be assembled on this intake manifold. I'm going to walk you guys through all the steps in my next Subaru only DIY video, which incidentally we're walking through and we're keeping track of on this whiteboard right here. As you guys can see, I'm actually skipping all the way down to the intake manifold. I'm going to do the intake manifold before I go ahead and do the new time belt kit. And of course, this intake manifold is being installed on that EJ205 engine, which is right here. And as you guys can see, the top half of this engine is all ready for that intake manifold once it's completely reassembled. But without this intake manifold, it's actually a good chance to walk through a couple of the components on this engine. This part right here, this is actually called your coolant crossover pipe. That's where coolant exits after it's been circulating around your heads. So it's actually at its hottest point and it exits right here into this coolant crossover pipe. And then this coolant crossover pipe collects all the coolant from both sides of the engine and then takes it out this tube and into the radiator. Now the other two pipes you're looking at are actually these two pipes. And these are actually coolant pipes. This pipe right here is actually coming back from your heater core, which means this one above it is actually the one that goes to your heater core. And that actually makes sense because this is your coolant crossover pipe. And remember just a second ago, I said this is actually the hottest point for your coolant because right here, the coolant just finished recirculating around the head and absorbed all that heat from the combustion chamber and then it exits back into the block and it's exiting out the top of the block into this coolant crossover pipe right here. So this casting actually has a split off right here and this split off is actually where hot coolant goes over to your heater core and that's where you get the heat for your heater inside the cabin. And then right here it's actually returning from the heater core and the reason it's returning is because the water pump is actually applying negative suction pressure to this pipe and it's sucking it into the water pump and pumping it through the engine. And this other pipe is also a coolant pipe this pipe is coming from the other side of the engine where coolant is getting circulated around the turbo. And this pipe, like I showed, comes back down and gets sucked into the water pump and gets recirculated to the engine. So one thing to note is that all the coolant that's actually passing through these pipes is getting sucked into the water pump, is actually getting recirculated through your engine and actually doesn't get cooled. None of the coolant that gets sucked through these pipes actually gets cooled by a radiator. The only coolant that gets cooled by a radiator is the coolant that actually makes it out of this crossover pipe and out this point to your radiator. And that's actually an important thing to note because I'm actually installing one of the reverse cooling mod kits that are currently on the market. And I think they're a really good idea to induce more coolant flow around cylinder number four. But when you do that, you're actually recirculating more heat in your coolant system. It's actually not going back to the radiator through this crossover pipe. So that actually means overall, your engine might actually see a slight increase in coolant temperature. And this sucker right here, this is actually the AC bracket. I'm actually gonna remove my air conditioning but I'm still gonna use a bracket because it's got this really nice little hook point right here, which is perfect when you're removing and installing your engine. And if you're noticing that it looks like it's in pretty good condition, that's actually because I took a wire wheel to it and actually cleaned this sucker the other day. I started with cleaning with hot soapy water, and then I actually go and use a little bit of mad wheel cleaner to remove some of the oxidation that's on the aluminum surface. And after I removed all the oxidation with that mag wheel cleaner, and I've rinsed it with hot soapy water again, then I actually take a brass wire wheel and a brass wire brush and I use that brass wire wheel with my drill and I just clean the sucker up with that brass wire wheel. Another one of my upcoming videos will definitely be doing the timing belt for this WRX engine. That will be a step-by-step -step walkthrough for installing all the components associated with your timing belt and setting that timing belt for a dual overhead cam like these WRX and these STI motors. 
All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there for today. This has been a little behind the scenes update video for the next Subaru DIY video that I'm filming where I'm going to walk through all the steps for the reassembly and the installation of this intake manifold. Thanks again for watching the video, guys. If you have any questions or any comments, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a like. And if you think this video will be good for any of your friends in the Subaru community, please go ahead and click the link and share it with them. Thanks again for checking out the video, guys. My name's Luke. This is the Subaru Only Show. Until next time, guys. Later! Thanks again for watching this video, guys. As you guys know, I'm a diehard Subaru enthusiast. And I've also had the opportunity to be involved in motorsports for over two decades now. But I'm also a professional hydrogeologist. And I've actually spent years in laboratories performing experiments where I studied the flow of fluids using the properties of physics and fluid mechanics. In these YouTube videos, I'm actually able to combine my experience from the laboratories and all the research I've done with my experience from all the motorsport series I've been involved in and my passion for Subarus. If you have any professional inquiries about Subaru related R&D or digital marketing and media, you can contact me at SubaruOnlyShop at gmail.com. Or if you work in private industry or for a public municipality and you'd like to contact me for professional environmental or engineering and design services, you can review my professional academic background, my professional research experience, and my professional consulting experience on LinkedIn. Just go ahead and sign into LinkedIn and look for Luke Shannon and then type TRC. That's the company I currently work for. And if you type Luke Shannon and TRC, I'm the only person that's gonna come up. Thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. I hope to hear from you soon.